Joining us now on the Mar Army Rock Show, uh, a guest we've had previously on the show. You will know Reed Henry from My Darkest Days. You'll know him from Dead Set Society. You will now know him as a solo artist as well. So lots going on there. Reed, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a while since we talked, so um, as I kind of did in the intro there, so you've evolved a little along the course of your career, so kind of catch us up where you are, musically speaking, I guess. Yeah, I just dropped a new song. It's called Monster. It's available now on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music. Um, it's uh, It's been incredible. It's been a week since I put it out. We're, uh, we're, we're crushing on YouTube. It's been uh, It's just been all over the internet. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and definitely uh, something that I've looked forward to for a long time. So I'm very excited to finally get it out. And I'm really, really grateful for the, uh, the amount of positivity that I've, uh, and great feedback that I've had from people. Now, did it take a lot of thinking to kind of do a solo project? Or was it just a natural evolution of kind of how things have gone? Or, or were you just not in search of a band? Like kind of get into why, you know, why the solo thing at this time? Well, one thing I did learn uh, when we rebranded as Dead Set Society um, due to some, you know, whatever legal matters we didn't, when you know, I won't get into now, but uh, uh, yeah. one, thing I did, uh, one thing I did learn from that especially was uh, um, that it doesn't matter what the band is called. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're never gonna like turn on a band like, I think that band, that band name is really cool and then you listen to it and you're like, hmm, this music's not really for me but I'm gonna just I'm going to plow through that. No, of course not. You don't care what the band name is. You care what the song is. And for me, that was very eye-opening. As a writer and an artist, you always want to try and have that um, sort of summary, artistic summary of your body of work, which uh, which is uh, band names are amazing for uh, you know album titles, that kind of thing. Really, really hammer that home. But for me, as a writer and an artist, um, it just, it's what makes sense for me now. I, I never ever uh, want to be in a position where I'm throttled musically, where I'm not releasing music to people, where I'm not growing as an artist. Um, and, and this is what uh, the sort of most organic progression and the most organic way forward for me turned out to be. So I was super excited to see the new single come out, and then when I listened to it, I immediately loved the song, put it in our golden dozen. Now tell us a little bit, let's start lyrically, what's the song about? Yeah, I mean, this song was written, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was in a dark place uh, when, I, when I made that song, and I think that, uh, you know, that can be a liberating thing, and in the sense that uh, I think the song is about coming to terms with yourself and forgiving yourself for your mistakes, forgiving yourself, for, uh, you know, dealing with that guilt in a, in a proactive way, um, and I, I think that I found, I found that acceptance of myself in some of those darkest moments. So it's, it's just about, you know, being okay with the monster who you are or whatever, being okay with who you are. So, and, let, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the musicianship on the record now. Uh, did you do a lot, of, most of the instrumentation? Did you work with some folks you want to give a shout out to? And who produced this for you? Uh, actually, I made it in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> my friend, my friend Gate, He's really great. Uh, Gabe Kalucci mixed the uh, mixed and mastered the, the, the song, the, uh, the single, and, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff in the works with him now. Um, I mean, the, the visual art was done by a great friend of mine, uh, Bill Martin, a very talented gentleman, and uh, my my little brother actually made a lyric video, and uh, him and I are kind of going back and forth on a number of different um, songs that I'm going to try and have come out throughout the duration of the rest of the year. Uh, so I got a really great team of people, a core a group of my friends that handle a lot of the visual stuff and uh, and some of the more technical aspects of the song, uh, and, or rather the recording. But um, yeah, I mean, insofar, it's, it's, I, in terms of musically, it's, it's just me, man. So are we looking, are we going to see more, not to pressure you because it just came out, are we going to see more singles coming out or an EP or something? Or are you just going to, I mean, that seems to be the model now is a couple singles at a time or a single at a time? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm a bit... I heard I grew up with records like Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by, by Smashing Pumpkins and, uh, you know, of course, like Nevermind and, and other classic records, Deftones, like White Pony, um, but uh, for Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails. Those records are classic and they'll live forever, but they're also representative of a period in time, not just like that artist's life at that period of time, which is what makes, in my opinion, what make, makes a record great, um, but it represents a day and age that just is gone badly to me it's badly but it's for, 
for better or for worse, that area is gone. You and I both know we're not sitting down staring at a wall listening to a record. You know, unless something really bad happened. <laughs> or, you know, and, and not to say people don't do that. But so I maybe the last three months, but other than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I do, and you just need to get away from the world a little bit, and you throw on a record you love. That's great. But I, I think, by and large, that's not how people consume music anymore. So right. It's just not. You don't want to listen to the same artist for 10 tracks in a row. I mean, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't think anybody does. So I, I don't feel bad about the fact that I'm kind of trying to dispense with the notion of of making a record anymore per yeah. se I, I think that things are just that's not how life works anymore and, and maybe as a business model if you're going to cling to it you know if it makes you feel better as an artist do it I'm not here to tell anybody else how to live personally I'm going to put a new song out every month until someone physically stops me <laughs> um, and I'm going to deliver visual content and an acoustic version a month after each release until like I said I, until you know whatever until they lock me up and stop me because uh, as an artist I, I have at this point I have a backlog of ideas and songs and my only fear is that I want I want those songs to land with people and I want to connect with my audience I want to connect with that Dark Days fans and I think that the, the hardest part for me isn't writing the music or recording it it's picking which song is, I think is going to connect most with the people who already know who, who I am and what I do um, and not to challenge them in a way that maybe sometimes I feel like I want to but at the end of the day, I know that people, we want to rock, you know, we want to listen to the music we like. And, and so I don't want to, you know, put that on anybody without enough, without sufficiently first delivering, you know, I guess the, the flavor of ice cream I'm known, to, known for making. So. Now, um, I saw uh, your acoustic performance the other day online, and that's pretty cool. Are, is there, are you, artists are kind of starting to plan some tours now? Are you thinking about getting out? Or are you going to hold tight for a little while still? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I, I don't think... I live in Canada, and we're not allowed out of the country right now. <laughs> yeah, I think a little bit, but yeah, it's pretty locked down for us here. So unfortunately, I'm not able to tour yet. But as soon as I am, I'm absolutely jumping in a van. I'm going to go hit, hit up some shows. I'm going to get a uh, a lot of friends in Chicago area and uh, in LA. So I'll definitely throw a van together with some of my friends, and we'll uh, we'll rock it out. Man, I noticed uh, something the other day. The Dead Set Society stuff, even though it's on hiatus, those songs are kind of still going strong, aren't they? It's a, it's a trip, man, honestly. Like a Nightmare, it just hit 7 million streams, which, uh, you know, I remember when that song was just like a bunch of tracks on my cracked computer. Like, you know, I have this uh, 2009 that's just like got a cracked screen. I use an external monitor for it. <laughs> and some, some of that, you know, the synth sounds you hear at the beginning of the track and some of those gags and, and lifts and rises in that song um, were, were, you know, programmed and, and sound designed on this hilarious joke of an excuse of a computer that have 7 million streams on Spotify now it's like it hurts my mind a little bit so yeah I'm extremely grateful for all, all of that and, and I hope to uh, you know obviously keep keep doing my thing and keep getting my songs out there now the first time I met you um, was in Atlantic City at the House of Blues you were playing with My Darkest Days at the time and uh, man reflect back it's like that's a once in a lifetime band for an artist. I think like there, there are thousands and thousands yeah. of people out there. I, I guess what was it that made the band launch? Was it being discovered by the single Nick or single Nickelback? Probably didn't hurt, but I guess I right. Know, man, there was so much to it. I think that band would have. I was a fan of that band. I moved out when I was eighteen in two thousand and eight. Uh, well, I was twenty actually, and um, and I uh, I met those guys started living across the hall from them um, in this crappy little dingy rehearsal space by the lake downtown in the city. And I, I was living in the country prior to that. So it was a big, huge leap, leap of faith for me. And, and I was fortunate enough to move in next to a very early sort of version of My Darkest Days, pre-sell, um, when it was just Matt and Brendan and Dougie. And just listening to them um, rehearse and, and write those songs and, and see how hard they worked and what they were doing really inspired me and invigorated me as an artist and it's like and they like there was an electricity in the scene at the time um, back in the day when, when they were playing shows and I remember kind of like being a Klingon just like standing backstage watching them play and like they would burn the plate down man it was incredible and, and the vibe the electricity in the air was, was palpable it was it was there I remember when um, we got the uh, the Time to Island Def Jam, uh, Mercury Island Def Jam, um, got the American record deal, and and like from from that point on, it was it was crazy. 
simply crazy. And and yeah, I mean, like the first six months of touring, porn star dancing was just obscene. It was ridiculous. To this day, it's like, did that happen? Like, <laughs> I have the plaques on my wall, and, and like, you know, I know it happened, but. It feels so weird, man. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, musicians well, that yeah. go go a fifty year career and never have that kind of success. So shout out to you, man. It had to be special. Look back oh, at yeah, the, it's the totally humbling, and, and to, uh, to caveat that, like that success is absolutely credited to to, to the, the hard work and dedication and songwriting of Matt Walsh and uh, and and you know Dougie and Brendan um, and and the amount of effort they put in there. And, and uh, I think Sal and I brought. Um, a different energy to the band, and I think we, we helped drive it forward. But, but yeah, I mean, total credit goes to credit where it's due. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I was just in the right place at the right time. I was just a lucky guy. So, do you have a personal favorite My Darkest Day song? I heard you do one acoustic the other day. And uh, do, you, do you have one that still kind of hangs around as your favorite and that you still like to play from time to time? Yeah, honestly, some of the B sides, the early versions, to me, because I was you know so young and, and um, as a fan, some of the, the songs that didn't even make the record are kind of my <laughs> favorite. Because I, uh, you know, not that I don't love the records, of course. Joey Moy and Chad Berger were uh, were geniuses, and I was very fortunate to, to grow as an artist and learn from you know such heavy dude. Um, I think uh, the first record's got so many great songs on it. I think like nobody else is probably one of my one of my favorites personally I mean if it's bar you know if, if you're in a bar time and place and, and you know what that's the, the great saying that uh, the Chad Kruger quoted there's songs for her songs for him songs for us and, and I think that uh, that's very very true when it comes to the discography and the the, uh, the catalog of my darkest days songs there's there's songs for the strip club and there's songs for the the patty the cottage you know and, and I think that um, it depends on where I am at that time I'm not, I don't really throw in my darkest days uh, for personal listening really um, but um, but when it when it is on I, I enjoy you know I enjoy most of that most of that song, uh, catalog what is it you know when I when I think of Canada man I think hockey beer and rock and roll and I think what is it about that what is it about that little it's almost like you're like a small family really the industry's small and huge at the same time up there because all the connections sure. with Three Days Grace and Nickelback and you know just Art of Dying they, they, if I fit, trace the family tree <laughs> you're all connected yeah. somehow how did that like is it just networking from history or how does it happen like that it is a really small community. Um, I think that the music scene's changed so much in the past ten years; it's unrecognizable to the to the music scene that I came up in. Um, I think that the Peterborough, Norwood, small town Ontario scene that that kind of that I was sort of fortunate to rub shoulders with and then you know eventually be a part of um, was was the part of the the scene. I think that that scene and Vancouver, British Columbia, near Seattle. Yeah, those two scenes respectively with those guys. Uh, uh, were obviously responsible or you know the, the homes of default and uh, oh, Brian yeah. Howes um, Nickelback of course um, Theory of a Dead Man and uh, a number of other great bands but uh, but that that scene was really cool I think The Art of Dying Three Days Great Finger Eleven scene that I'm sort of a part of um, I guess My Darkest Days uh, that, that sort of community very very close knit everybody knows everybody but and, I mean there's way more to it as well as you can probably imagine the city now is just like you know alternative bands falling out of every hole in the crevice and <laughs> yeah. so it's it's different now for sure but um yeah I mean I think I, part of the, the age of the internet becoming what it is it's, it's splintered in a lot of ways and that I, I don't think uh, it, it, it's great for you know connecting the world but it's certainly also fractures I think local scenes in a way that it, I, I'd never anticipated it which seems kind of intuitive right because you'd think it'd be more connected but yeah I, I don't really even you know coming back home years ago when I stopped touring um, as as intensely I don't you know there's no real pull for me to go to a show or see a local band really you know I see my friends when they play or, yeah. which tend to be more national act at this point in my life but um, yeah there's no not really like a cult music culture here like there was back in the day and that there is still very much alive and well in, in a lot of midwestern places that I've been to and uh, and you know the east, east coast you see a lot of and LA for that matter when I was in LA I think there's still like a really alive rock scene Vegas LA have great scenes they just 
yeah, I mean, it's just changed a lot here. Yeah, they're out there. You just got to find them, man. That's for sure. So, exactly. um, uh, Reed Henry of My Darkest Day, Dead Set Society. But now, Reed Henry, solo artist. Uh, the gr- new song is called Monster. It's in our Golden Dozen right now. So if you haven't heard it yet, you're going to hear it tonight on the show. And uh, you want to check it out for sure. Pick it up, stream it, all that good stuff. So, uh, Reed, man, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I really appreciate it. Rocky, thank you so much for having me.